only to have it all slip into a bog just three stages ago. Although the Lancia is still running, it looks as if it will be over the maximum time allowed. Others have dropped out during the night. John Weatherly's Citroen will not appear, and the life in Desi McCartney's engine has disappeared in the all-night marathon. Brooks has stretched his lead by almost a minute. Both he and Fisher are coping masterfully with the conditions. And McRae's magnificent drive brings him right back to third. He has made up 32 places in just three days. Dawn for Trevor Fleming is nothing new and the flying coal merchant is heading for circuit honours despite no sleep and a very light-hearted approach to rally. But all these survivors have to keep fighting that terrible tiredness for the few remaining stages. Breakfast time and an hour's rest. Russell Brooks has been to the manor borne by his Vauxhall Chevant. Thoughts of a bowl of crispies probably bring a little snap and crackle to pop. Well, I'm feeling very nervous now with three stages still to go. Well, you've, come a, you've had the, held the lead for a long way. Surely uh, nothing can go wrong now. Well, we don't intend to lose it now. Well, we've even put some very strong tyres on, so we've got no chance of getting a puncture. So uh, it's ironical in a way that it's yourself a previous winner who should dethrone Jimmy McRae? Um, it's an event where experience counts for a tremendous amount, so I don't think that's so surprising in many ways. You know, it's, um, uh, you've got to learn to pace yourself and a knowledge of what the stages are like rather than the stages in detail is always very useful. We had a fairly undramatic night. We just drove as quick as we felt it was safe. We so, no pressure from behind, so you're in a fairly secure position. You no chance of catching the leader, and you're fairly secure from behind. So yeah, we're, we're about four minutes behind Russell, and uh, about 15 minutes in front of Jimmy. So, so you're not going to take any chances there's just to entertain the spectators not, or anything like that. Not a lot we're going to do, you know. Third, third now. Yep. That's a tremendous recovery from 35th. Are you satisfied with that? Yeah, I think we are. Uh, I don't think we could wish for any better. I never thought we'd we would be uh, third. Do you shed a tear that you've uh, now lost the circuit after three years on the throne? Yeah, you've got to do it sometime. <laughs> and I kind of win them all. Will you be back again to try and regain the crown? Oh, yes. Oh, see, if I'd won it this year, I might have said that I couldn't have come back and try it for the fifth time. See, I'll let you come back now. You've lost the beard since we last spoke to you a few days ago at Mandelo Park. Yeah, that's true. Does that make you go any quicker? I don't know. I thought it might. I'm not sure whether it did or not. It might have been contributed something. Well, obviously, I mean, their overall position at the moment is... Uh, does that not surprise you? Oh yes, if someone had asked me at the start of the rally how I was going to end up, I wouldn't have been as optimistic as that by any means. I'd be certainly very pleased. So is your position at present secure? Well, I, you, know, you can never be sure. I mean, there can be me mechanical mishaps and that sort of thing, but... Um, There's no one close enough to worry you? Oh, no. Um, Ronnie's about five or six or maybe even seven minutes behind, and, um, well, we know who's in front, and I'm not going to catch him. The roll of honour. Louise Aiken and Ellen Morgan hadn't just won the ladies, they had impressed everyone and vanquished many more experienced competitors. Keith Edwards and John King proved that good results can still be achieved on low budgets. Stanley Orr and Jimmy Davidson displayed the true art of rally. Frank Fennell and Tom Callaghan, the top South of Ireland crew. Kieran and Langley Humphreys, a family triumph. Sean Burke and Hugh O'Donnell, perseverance and pace. And tremendous Trevor comes home in 13th place. Again, Fleming has finished the circuit in magnificent style.
13th overall, but perhaps it is the spectators that are lucky on this occasion. But the power and the glory must go to the top six finishers. Chris Lord is not only sixth, but he is also the most law-abiding competitor. So Russell Brooks becomes a member of the elite club of three-time winners of the Circuit of Ireland, joining Paddy Hopkirk, Roger Clark and Jimmy McRae. But for Jimmy, that brown Friday was the April Fool that he'll never forget. <laughs> 